Hi everybody. Right, you're getting another video today by default because I had such a an irritating day yesterday, interruptions left, right and centre, that all I got stitched was this seam in buttonhole lace and that seam in buttonhole lace and one, two, three added bits of applique for this. Now if you'd have seen the video the other day when I put this together, um, if you didn't see it, then it's day before yesterday on my blog, if you just scroll down the page a little bit. Um, I said, so these weren't here and that piece was joined on as an extra piece and I said I was going to do this here and I've got one to go down here and then along here I said I was going to do some little applique circles didn't I but what I thought I'm going to put some little bumpy bits in there so I'm just going to add a bumpy bit on camera today just to keep you interested because I can't believe yesterday was horrendous um, not in a bad way but when you get one of them days where everything conspires against you so even in the evening it was a bit like that. So I'm just going to draw a circle freehand on the back of this cloth. Not a very big circle. I don't want them massive but then I don't want them too small that it's too fiddly. So I think that'll be okay. In pencil, um, if I was working with white I might well use Taylor's chalk because um, pencil, Taylor's chalk eventually will disappear. pencils are okay on the back of this. I had an email from somebody yesterday asking me how I stop. You know those blue mark pens you can get that are supposed to wash out? How do I manage to use them and not have it ruin my work? I think this person must have assumed, um, I mean why not assume it, it's not a problem, that I, sorry, I'll just, I need a sharp needle now with some normal gutterman threading which is this. Um, and I'm not going to knot it but I mean there's nothing wrong with them assuming that but I, I, my answer was I never ever 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 use those pens ever because I once saw it wreck completely wreck somebody's work when it came to the, the rinsing out process just never ever ever use them uh, that's my advice but I mean obviously and then a million people would use one and not have any problems so but because I've witnessed this that put me off. So now I'm just doing one turnover of about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to do that all the way around here. Um, I don't knot my thread for this part because it, I find, for me personally, it makes it easier to remove the thread when I've finished. So I'll just do a couple of over stitches at the beginning and literally just fold it over now I'm going to have a look in a sec at the camera, see if I should pull it. I say I don't want to pull the camera in because then I know from experience that what will happen is I will move my stitching position and I won't realise that it's out of camera shot and I'll be talking to you and you won't have a clue what I'm talking about because you won't be able to see. So Now this can be very fiddly to do depending on how big your circle is. I'm actually beginning to think that this one might be a little bit bigger than I had wanted because it's not as fiddly. So, but I'm just going to go with it because it doesn't matter if they're not all the same size as I progress along there. And also, I can do a bigger fold over in some places to make it a bit smaller. So, nearly all the way around now. And then you've got the outline of a circle with all that tacked down. Now I'm going to leave, I like to leave my starting end and my finishing end on the front but because I was talking, because I was wittering away then I can't remember if I did that with the front one but I'm going to leave my finishing end on the front. Okay, like that. So it's kind of a circle isn't it? And I'm going to cut that off now and then I'm going to put a knot in this thread now which when I say I'm going to put a knot in this thread, I'm going to put about five knots in this thread because it's so fine. It's just me making sure I'm happy that it's going to be um, secure. So you might have counted them, I don't know, maybe I've got six or seven now. But it just gives me a bit more of a substantial knot because this thread is so fine. Cut that tail off. 
and then I need my hoop. Um, I do this with an embroidery hoop. So I'm going to put that here, aren't I? So I'm going to try and get that quite close to the edge and then it'll be easier for me to do. Now don't worry, you might be thinking, oh my goodness, she's putting that hoop really tight over all them bullion knots and over all that stitching. Don't worry, doesn't matter. If you've ever done any of my classes, you'll know damn stretching will resolve that issue. I first of all, though, I've got a decision to make. I should have made that decision, actually, before I did this. Should I put them under that line? Or should I... Right, I was going to say, should I put them on the line to disturb the line, which quite appeals to me. But they're too big, because when I get to here... So I'm going to put them under the line. It doesn't matter. I mean, it would have been nice to put them on the line to disturb the line, but I've done that with that. That's crossing over that line. Um, one part of the hoop. But I don't want this video to be hours and hours long because I don't want you to get bored. Um, so let's get on with it, Karen. So I'll just lay that down there. No pinning, no tacking, nothing. Hold it down with my thumb. And I'm going to stitch around it, catching the edge now. With this gutterman thread. Okay, and I'm going to do this all the way around. Now I may turn the camera off while I do this bit, um, just for the sake of the length of the video, because at, at the end of the day this isn't a class and I can't expect you to come here and sit through hours of boring stuff. Right, so I'm going to turn off now, so I'm going to do that all the way around until I get to about there and that's going to leave me an opening of about half an inch okay so I'll turn off while I do that and then I'll come back okay I've done that now now I always finish that bit with my needle on the top okay um, so if I just put my needle in my work it's still threaded and everything so I've got to close that hole over when I've stuffed it now I'll just use this it's like fibre film that you use to stuff soft toys and it's surprising, you don't need as much as you think. I very often get a bit carried away and I've way too much. So normally, if I was using a lot, I would do this to separate it and make it fluffy and get any like knotty bits out of it. But that's fine because it's only a little bit. So just refold it again, like into a ball. And then use just lift it up there with my scissors and start to push that in my finger. But then use my scissors just to push it in there. Could possibly get a little bit more in there. Go from one extreme to the other, don't I? From way too much to not enough. So just push it in. You're not going to damage your scissors doing this. I do have a pair of tweezers that I use for this if I'm in the other room when I'm sitting of a night time. I am sewing. But that's fine because I'm only pushing the end in. Okay. So then get my needle and now close this hole in exactly the same way as I started to attach this. So literally just little tiny stitches to close that over and you'll realise as well, you'll notice that the tacking stitches are still in there. So don't take them out until I've closed the hole and fastened this off because I don't want the edges coming out, flipping out and becoming unruly now that's coming out a little bit so you have to push that back in again that happens there's nothing to worry about with that it does just happen so I'll go all the way around now also when I've got my class starting just over a week if you hate these videos that I put on my blog you're going to be in paradise because I won't be able to do them once my class has started, um, maybe one every four or five weeks, maybe I won't have time, you see. So if you hate them, you'll be free of me soon, don't worry. And if you love them, all I can do is apologise, but I just don't have time. <clears throat> but I do keep it in the back of my mind that I don't want to neglect my blog for my class, but then I just don't have the time. I suppose maybe a three minute one every couple of weeks but I can't stop talking so they always end up longer than three minutes this is my final one if I put that down there and go to the back ok 
okay and just fasten that off by over stitching through all that wadding that's in there at the back and that's as simple as that that's how simple that is okay now cut that off now I'm not going to demonstrate the next bit um, but you know you can use your imagination I will talk to you about it then remove the tacking I think there. so and there you have your bump now what I'm going to do with that now just put this needle away what I'm going to do with that now is I'm going to edge it, then you will edge it. You can edge it with running stitch, chain stitch, French knots, bullion knots, whatever you want to edge it with. Um, these are just edged with chain stitch, these petal shapes. This has got half bullion knots and half French knots. Um, knock yourselves out, put whatever you want around the edge of that, okay. Right, I'm going, shut up Karen, you've been talking for too long.